Welcome to Prime Time Wrestling. We are at the Bloomington Nights here in Bloomington, Minnesota. I am Mark Mantel. And I'm Donnie Colfax, and that is Lenny Lane, the PTW World Heavyweight Champion, a man who has turned his back on me and so many that he, he called friends, allies, and chose these people. He chose to represent them. He may have turned his back on some of the miscreants from his past who did him no good, but the fans will never turn their back on the champion, Lenny Lane. They absolutely love him around these parts. That's the greatest lie ever told, that these fans, these people, will turn their back on you. They always do, Mark. They always do. Maybe with the likes of yourself that might be true, but those with personal integrity always win the hearts of the Prime Time. Thank you, everybody, and welcome to the third season of Prime Time Wrestling. Now, you know, if somebody would have told me three years ago when we started this, we'd still be here today. From what I've seen with independent wrestling around the state of Minnesota, I'd have thought you were crazy. But because we have the best talent, the best workers, but most importantly, all of you, give yourselves a round of applause for being a prime time wrestling recognition. Now I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The bad news is, is unfortunately, a couple months ago, I was involved in a car accident. And because of that car accident, I had to go down to Florida and see Dr. Andrews. The good news is I will not need surgery. The bad news is I'm out for an undetermined amount of time. So unfortunately, it's being your prime time heavyweight champion and giving you guys championship bouts each and every month, I'm going to have to forfeit the prime time wrestling heavyweight championship. No, that, that is not at all what these fans wanted to hear. This is what I wanted to hear though, the music of the Persian aristocrat. Arya Davari, the man who should be champ, the man who, who had that gold stolen from him, he's the rightful claim to the throne. And conveniently, now that Lenny Lane is talking about relinquishing the title, look who's first to the ring, Arya Davari, the Persian aristocrat himself. Who would you rather have come to the ring, Mark? He is, he is the PTW champion in my eye. That has not changed despite what I'm seeing in front of me as Lenny Lane cavalierly slings that beautiful strap over his shoulder. There is a clear line of fan favorites who are itching to get a title shot, and even you know that, Donnie. Arya Davari is not necessarily the number one contender. He's owed it! He is owed it! You know, throughout my career, I've been hitting the head a lot, so I'm a little hard of hearing, but did you say that you're giving up the prime time wrestling championship? Hey, what I got He do. is hanging it up. He's giving it up. You know what? I fully support that. I think you should do the right thing and give up the prime time wrestling championship. To. Of course he I'm thinks that's to. a good idea. And as the last champion, I think that belt should be given back to a real wrestler. The wrestler here in primetime wrestling. Well, everybody's had heard what you've had to say. There was another surprise in all this, Mr. Davari. What's that? Primetime wrestling has made me the active commissioner for the rest of the season until I come back. Are you? Oh, that's the inmate is running the and asylum? Says, my belt back. You were rightfully a prime time wrestling champion. 
but I'm sure there's a bunch of other guys behind that curtain that would like a shot also. Has everyone gone insane? Lenny Lane just exactly uh, explained my thoughts. The Black Stallion. Competitors. John Johnson. Glory plays. Cody Rice, that man. You see what I mean, Glory? There's a lot of guys here. Who want this belt? Here's what we're gonna never do beat right me. now. You never pin me. We're gonna have a little fun here at Prime Time Wrestling. We're gonna have a drawing to see who gets a bye into next month's round of the championship. Can I have one of you two young fellows enter the ring, please? I don't want to. What child wants to get in here? Right here. Hop on in. There you go. I know, right? Take a look at that. This arm is mad at the rest of me because it didn't keep up. Could have went pro. But I did go pro. I'm Billy Blaze. We're here tonight. Wait. We're going to let this kid decide the fate of the World Heavyweight Championship? He looks like a very intelligent youngster to me. We're going to advance to the second round of the brackets for the Primetime Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. You better pick my name. His eyes are closed. Hand it to the ring You have chosen Magic Man. There's a crowd favorite. The crowd would love to see the Magic Man. Everybody, Very convenient. Richfield's favorite son gets the pie. All too convenient. Look at that smile, that smug smile on his face. Man, obviously, the crowd would back that enthusiasm. They love the fact that okay. he's received that buy. I see all the faces out here. Let's start making up these brackets. Arnie and Tavari, since you're anxious to wrestle tonight and yeah. you're a, was a former primetime wrestling champion, tonight you will be wrestling another former yeah. primetime wrestling champion, Rennie D. That is all he's been doing, he's just making it up as he goes along. This is ridiculous. Rennie D looks pleased with the decision. On a whim he decides this. I noticed your partner, Mitch Paradise, isn't here. Yeah. I've got something real special right now for Mitch, and I know you're in the back. I'm going to do something special right now. I don't know if you've been watching TV or other promotions, but we got this thing called social networking where people get to vote what matches they want and who they want to wrestle in them. Well, unfortunately for social networking, we sit at home. We don't know if that's the truth or not. So what I'm going to do right now, and a special present to all of you, I'm going to allow you guys right here to choose You're the matches. You're kidding me! The world has gone upside down in the Bloomington Knights. What? Yes, the people are... Just hold on a second. I know what you're doing, Lenny. You're trying to get me to, work, to, work, to get beat up. I mean, Russell, Mitch, Paradise. And that's not, that's not going to happen. I'm not wrestling Mitch Paradise. That's my friend and body beautiful. I love Mitch and there's nothing that you or any of these idiots here are going to do to make my own. I'm not doing it. You can't make me. Well, we haven't had the vote yet. But let's ask the people. Ladies and gentlemen, in a tank in a championship bracket, would you like to see Billy Plays versus Mitch Paradise? That sounds unanimous to me. That sounds ridiculous to me. Absurd. I, I almost laugh at the idea. He must have screwed that up too, former commissioner. 
I got a special present from Mitch Paradise's doctor. Glaze well, just handing a note oh, to Laszlo. Reed lays it on to, to Lenny Lane. Read it, boys. Well, it looks like, unfortunately, I'll uh, include us as a collective group. We've been swerved. Mitch Paradise has a doctor's appointment letter that says he is excused from wrestling tonight because of an ingrown toenail. Grown Tony. I would never wish anything upon Mid Paradise, but thankfully that is so. My condolences to Mitch and hope he gets well soon. Well, wrestling's always looking for great young talent, so I'll tell you what, Billy Blaze. Come on, guys. Tonight, you will be wrestling one of these two. I'll wrestle one of those two. Sean White. No, you don't get to pick. The people get to pick. How about Billy Blaze? Versus Ricky Love and Mickey Free. That is something this crowd would love to see. Part in the fun, Ricky Love and Nikki Free. They voted. You're wrestling championship bracket match number two. Billy Blaze versus Ricky Love and Nikki Free in a handicap match. In a handicap match. Leads us. Cody Rice now asking for time, asking to confer with Lenny Lane, and he has the, the only microphone person more now. biased than you. Any other wild, great ideas are brought up by your fans? I just want to let everyone know I'm very sensitive about my weight. I weighed myself this morning, and I'm 100. 98 pounds. Congratulations to the Husky Heartthrob. Well, he is pulling the wool over all of our eyes because I don't think he's anywhere near 198. Wait, 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 hold on, time off. You've been running around for the last four or five months talking about how much you weigh. Let me try that. Words for rice. Do you people want somebody to shut him up tonight? Yeah. 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 Do you people want to see me slap this yes. chump around for a little bit? Yeah. They concur. I think you got your answer right there. Well, I guess it's unanimous then for the third bracket match for the primetime wrestling heavyweight champion. It's the Black Stallion. No. Versus Cody Reese. That is a matchup made by Lenny Lay. These fans are sure to enjoy. So what else you got? This leaves you, Mr. Johnson. Oh. They love me. Ryan Cruz. Oh. You guys will be the fourth and final match for the heavyweight championship bracket tonight. Hey. Oh, he's in there. Oh. By the way, Aria, you might as well stay in the ring. Ready to get in here, too, because your match is right now. Yeah. Ah, I'm speechless! What's shaking, Mr. Rice? Big show, big appetite. The regular pre-show of Al Lorenzo's meatball hogging? That's right. Have the cook throw an extra meatball on there for me. I have a big match tonight. Hoagie for you, Mr. Blade? Does it look like this body eats hoagies? Can I get your salad? Biggest salad you got. I'm Cody Rice, and you may know me as the Husky Heartthrob from Primetime Wrestling. Before every show, I have a little appetite, so I head to the Bloomington Fat Lorenzo's for a meatball hoagie.
Arabian Nights, it is now time for the Primetime Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship Tournament. And kicking things off will be Reddy D and his opponent, Arya Davari. Yeah, you said it almost as good as I did as Arya puts the boots to Reddy D. Davari starting off with a bang now, elbows him right down. Reddy D on the canvas. Davari with an early pin, pin cover attempt there, only got two. Wasting no time on this. He knows the implications in this matchup. This sets you back on a path, Arya, to becoming the champion you rightfully are. Hard shots to the solar plexus by Davari. And look at the authority displayed with that turnbuckle snap. His body just came right off of that thing. For a man who's experienced so much injustice, and Davari berating Reddy D now. So much, so much time. So many, so many people have told him he can't, he shouldn't, and he won't. But Arya's proved the doubters wrong, and he's gonna do it right now to Reddy D. Davari, fists to the head now. Let's get in there, PJ Thorne. Make sure those are open fists. Davari seems to be in firm control early on. Although Reddy D ducks the clothesline. Acrobatic move against the ropes. We reversed it. That's how it ended up with an elbow of his own. And he is climbing or ascending, shall I say, the body of Davari. And he is laying him in there as the crowd counts along. They would count along, wouldn't they? Because Reddy D is their hero. No, they're counting along because they love the atmosphere here at the Bloomington Knights. The atmosphere of the most exciting entertainment in the Midwest known as primetime wrestling. Not enough leverage. Ready on Arya. You are not going to get Arya Davari that easy, Ready. Re Sorry. Reverse chin lock now by Ready D. Has Davari down. This is not where Davari wanted to be at this point in the matchup, at this point in the competition. The referee is in position. They're making sure everything is good, clean, and legit. Davari breaks the hole. Goes under. Drop kick. And I don't think no. I've ever seen such a textbook drop kick, Donnie. I gotta be honest. That was beautiful. It's done. Come on. Two and. I might not like the man's politics or his demeanor, but he throws one hell of a drop kick. You gotta hand him that. If you want to see the precision, the in your face action, as only primetime wrestling can bring it to you, you gotta visit. And the body, sorry, the body of, of Rennie D just goes spilling to the outside. Sorry to cut you off there, Donnie. You, you, but if you want to see that action right there, you can see it for yourself right now, folks. If you want to be a part of this, visit ptwrestling.com. That's right, we don't have mats, we don't have protective dividers or anything. Did you hear the sound of that chop? Oh, and Rennie D returns in kind. The poke to the eye. Those are the tactics that Arya Davari will resort to at any given moment's notice. I didn't see anything of the sort. Uh, Maybe those fans at ringside did, but uh, we are course. up here at the Eagle's Nest. How is it that from the direct vantage point in the Eagle's Nest, we had two differing viewpoints? Yes. Yes. I have, I mean, come on, he's choking because him out now. We're two different people, just like these two gentlemen competing for championship gold, but only one can come out supreme, and that man is the Persian Sheik. Great camera work here, getting right in there. That's why these fans love primetime wrestling and why primetime wrestling is absolutely sweeping the nation. Starting here in the Midwest, look at this action. They're out near the concessions area. I think, I think, I think Arya's gonna give Reddy a little slice of Fat Lorenzo's pizza. Give him the energy to continue this. Indeed, it would seem that way. And these workers here at, behind the counter don't know what to make of this. Watch out! Arya Davari just put a dent in that door. It looks like a car wreck out here. Rennie D countered it. Rennie D is stalking Arya Davari now. He is not in a good mood. The usual good-natured heart of Rennie D has turned ice cold as of this moment. If anyone's stalking, it's Arya Davari in this matchup. Rennie D is he's simply an oppor opportunistic opponent for, for Arya Davari here. Arya has a clear plan, even though he didn't have one coming into it. He is such a great athlete, such a pro. Hard fist to the, to the head. Did you see that? It was so hard that it hurt Rennie's fist. But right here, see, he's got him, doesn't he? Yep, up in the air. Davari nicely reversed that, and he planted him right, where, right, in, the, right in the place. You don't want to be planted, quite frankly. Seven steps ahead is Arya Davari. 
seven steps ahead. He's probably already got Ari. Ari has already got ready pin. One, two, three. This match is over with. It's simply him implementing the plan and executing it as he does every time. And I gotta, I gotta hand it to him. He is definitely implementing his will at this point on Ready D. The only time that ever changes, Mark, is when people like you or Lenny Lay try and hold him down. I don't try to hold anyone down. I'm nothing but objective journalistic integrity over here, my friend. Ari Davari, reverse chin lock of his own now applied to Renny D. And, and you're, you're, you're firmly in the corner of Ari Davari, Donnie. And I'm firmly in the corner of this booth trying not to laugh at you out loud and ruin this me. broadcast as you lie to, my, to me and to these people about your journalistic integrity. Why the vitriol? Why, why, why the negativity in my direction? I'm just trying to call the match, of which I might add, Arya Davari is doing a fantastic job exhibiting his wrestling skills. There you go, Mark. Call it as you see it exactly. He has been owning Renny D as Arya Davari this entire matchup. The crowd is very much into this one. The electricity in the air is palpable. These fans cannot get enough of this match, and there is still so much more to come here tonight. There's a little bit more ready D, but he ready misses D it. Ready went for a flying cross body. Ari, as he just pointed out. Seven steps ahead, Mark, seven steps ahead. He was ahead in that case, that is certain. Ari Davari now in control, and a rude awakening, a nutbreaker right there. Nicely done, not since the aforementioned Rick Rude have I seen it done so perfectly. Two count by Davari, that is not quite enough to get the job done. Rennie D is a resilient individual. You can see the looks on both men's faces. They are giving it everything they have, but it looks like to me that the one of Rennie D is showing a little bit more pain right now. A little more anguish, a little more doubt. Rennie D just keeps crashing across the back and the side of the, the side of the stomach area with those knees. And he knows precisely where to place those knees to cause the maximum amount of damage does Davari. That is why he has been scouted by, by organizations and federations across the country here. From New York to Nashville all the way to Tokyo. Rennie. Folks are watching Arya Davari for a reason. Folks are also watching Reddy as he's trying to come back in this matchup. He's trying to get something going, but the spine buster is gonna stop that momentum dead in its tracks. Shades of Art Anderson for a two and a, just a two count. Reddy somehow though kicks out. That was incredible with such authority. Arya delivered that spine buster. Indeed he did, and I think the enforcer himself would have been proud of the authority with which that spine buster was delivered. How could you not be the world-class wrestler that Arya Davari has become? Renny D has nothing, no idea what's coming up behind him right now. Anyone who respects this sport has to have absolute respect for the Persian Sheik because he is supreme. And he is expertly applying that Cobra clutch there. He knows exactly how to hold that. That move is in his culture, in his lineage. He knows exactly what he's doing. Ready D fading fast until he was able to back him into the corner. Can he do it again? Yes, Ready, come on. Now's your chance. Knife edge, chop to the chest. Ready D has created this momentum that he so sorely needed. Countered though by Ari Davari, back into it. Oh yes, yes, and he, oh, and he takes and that, him down. He is now prone, he is now horizontal. And once there is no more feet underneath you with that Cobra clutch, it's only a matter of time. The crowd though, do you hear that? Donnie, do you hear that? How can I not hear them? I, I hear it, Mark. They They're love chanting Ready for it. D. They want so badly for Arya Davari not to win this match. I'll be blunt about it. There you go. Again, a little honesty from you, Mark. It's appreciated here in the booth. It's hard to be the only honest, true, objective one DJ here every Thorne time. Just tried to raise the hand for the third time, but Reddy D still has a bit, of, bit, a bit of life left in him. His fist is pumping, but I don't know if that's going to be enough for him to get back to his feet. Much less break the dreaded Cobra clutch on it. But he's up. He's done it. He's up at least. That's something. What is he doing in circles? It makes no That's what he was doing. He was using his brain is what he was doing. 
Arya Davari had no idea that the momentum would, would, the sheer momentum would throw his body. And now, speaking of throwing your body, Reddy G just throws his right at Arya on the outside. Reddy D in a suicide like maneuver just catapulted himself over the top rope. And Reddy D is now in a precarious position. One, two, no. Reddy D thought that it may have done it. But Arya Davari still able to kick out. You do not become the best in the world simply overnight. This is incredible competition, folks. This is primetime wrestling. And Reddy D now is doing everything in his power. He's going for the suplex. Davari counters, stops it a couple times, a couple fists for good measure. And Davari, he counters it right into a small package. One, two. That was quick, that was versatile. But no, no, no. Arya counters it, but. D holds on to the ropes. Oh my goodness. A roaring elbow by Arya Davari. Did you hear the force and the impact there? Right into the forehead for a one, a two, and a three. How in the world is Renny D anything less than completely knocked out? Exactly what I was going to say, Mark. Exactly. He should not be conscious. And Davari is thinking quite the same thing. And also now, what might be next in his repertoire, what's he going to do to Renny D? He's sizing him up. That Rennie... maniacal look in his eyes right now. He knows what he's got to do. Renny D looks disoriented, to say the least. Davari goes for the kick. Renny D grabs him by the leg, has him up. He puts it up. What's he gonna do? Down to the canvas. One, two, three. out. Laszlo, you're late. We're never gonna make it to the show on time. Don't worry about it. We got plenty of time. Just gotta get a quick oil change of freeway forward, and we'll be on our way to the matches. We don't have that kind of time. They can do it, quick and easy. Phil, good to see you, man. Hey, we need an oil change. We need it right now. Can you help us out? Don't worry, I'll get you right in. Fantastic. Told you so. Bring your car to the Freeway Ford Quick Lube. For only $29.95, we will perform a checkup that includes oil and filter change, tire check, brake check, and topping off your fluids. Mention the primetime wrestling Aria Davari special, and with your oil change, receive a free tire rotation. See, I told you they were fast. One, two, three. <laughs> you were right. Hey, hmm. now we got time for you to shave my back. We sure do. We sure do. Wrestling fans, thanks for staying with us through the break. Arya Davari there countering the backstabber attempt. We want to remind you to check out our Twitter. It's at PTWMN. Look at that on display though by Arya Davari. There he goes, counters, kick to the back of the head. And Reddy D is down and maybe out cold again. Want to remind you fans that this is one of the first matches in the Primetime Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship Tournament. And Davari has his sights set high as he is going to ascend high with that magic carpet. We know what that's for, Donnie. Oh, yes, we do. This means an end to the dream of Renny D to become the champion. Do it, Arya. He can't land it. Renny D available and has his wits available to move out of the way. And there's that backstabber. That's going to be it. Cover him, Renny. That's exactly what you all are. He goes for it. One, One two, two, kick out. No, he kicked out. His dream is still alive. This and the is dreams, the, the dreams of so many, Mark. This is the only thing driving Arya Davari is that world heavyweight title. It is what motivates him. It is the only thing he lives for. 
And it's what you should live for if you want to be anything in this sport. Renny D sets him up, reverse by Davari. Goes underneath, does, does Renny D is so quick. And he follows it up with a DDT that Tavari did not see coming. One, two. Tavari, nothing doing there. That was a beautifully done DDT. He just, um, he almost put Arya through the mat with that, D, with that DDT, just pounded him into it. And still, Arya has not been finished off. He has not, and Renny D now contemplating what is next for him. Arya Davari is on the mat, he is prone. There seems to be not much life left in him, and Renny D is setting him up. I don't see that up. at all. I, don't, I just see a man who has not relinquished his dream. A, a man who has a dream to become the champion again. This has been a hard fought matchup. Both men showing how bad they want the title. Listen to that super kick. That kick was heard from miles away. One, two. Davari is beside himself after that super kick did not end this matchup. And I quite frankly can't believe it either. I'm as bewildered almost as Aria is. It's, it's, Renny D is not down. This match, I didn't hear the bell. You didn't hear it, no. Nobody ah. has. One thing we did hear, you everyone in this arena did hear, ah. is that impact from you that super kick. And, and I'm, I'm hopeful that Renny D doesn't have a concussion at this point. Huh? Oh, an arrogant slap huh? to the face. Come on, Davari. Keep your focus on the matchup. Oh. Renny D coming back. Fists and chops is sending Davari back. He sets him up. He has him up. But no. Renny D grabs the lands. One, two, three. Renny D has won this matchup in a most unpredictable fashion. A man's dream has been ruined on this day. That was incredible. Indeed, I will say, Renny D came out of nowhere. How he grabbed those legs and he pinned the shoulders of the Persian Sheik to the mat. Clean and clear, fairly done. One, two, three, there's your winner, Renny D. I, that's all you see, I just see Renny D skirting out on a cheap victory to do advance in this championship tournament. And Arya Davari is heartbroken, as am I. But one man who is not is Renny D, who has championship aspirations still alive. Primetime Wrestling is coming back at you. Up next, the Black Stallion versus Cody Rice.
Welcome back, fans, making his way to the ring now in our second matchup in this championship tournament for the prime time heavyweight title is Cody Rice, the Husky Arthrop. Weighing in tonight at 198 pounds, but still, he has the courage, the goal, the intestinal fortitude to put it all on the line and compete for the World Heavyweight Championship. An opportunity at it, at least. What an incredible young man is Cody Rice. Rice trying to soak up the uh, perceived adulation from this crowd, but it does not seem like he's getting the reaction that he was hoping for. Which is just disappointing to me. It should be really disappointing to these people that a, that a guy like Cody Rice goes out there and lays it out and they don't appreciate him. Again, this is the Primetime Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship Tournament. And if this matchup is anything like our first one tonight, we're in for a heck of a fight. Especially as we hear the music of one of the, one of the bulls of Primetime Wrestling, if not the bull. Black Stallion is about to make his way down to this to this ring and he's he is quite frankly a legend in these parts is the Black Stallion and everyone knows that that confident swagger of the Stallion anytime you hear that music play is the next thing you're going to see I wasn't going to say that at all Mark not at all I was going to say the vindictiveness of the Black Stallion you saw him before talking smack about Cody Rice the man who has taken him to the limit and still the Black Stallion shows no respect to the Husky Hardcore. What it, kind of man is he for that? It seems to me like Cody Rice, the only thing he's taken to the limit has been a 200 pound scale, and that's why he's left it off at 199, or 198, whatever it is he says, he claims. These fans, they love him. Primetime Wrestling is brought to you by Budweiser, who reminds you responsibility matters. Freeway Ford Bloomington, your way at Freeway. Visit FreewayFord.net. And Fat Lorenzo, pizza, pasta, hoagies, Italian in a big way. Both of these men have big aspirations. Both want to be on top of the PTW Mountain as champion. And there you see Cody Rice jawjacking with the fans at ringside. Of course, the famous popcorn man at ringside joining us tonight. The Husky Heartthrob, Cody Rice. And still, still no love for Cody Rice. And there you hear the adulation that Cody Rice wishes he could be receiving. These fans love the Black Stallion as this Texas transplant is here in Minnesota, a hometown boy in, Hus in Husky Heartthrob. Cody Rice gets nothing, no love, but the out-of-towner, Black Stallion, oh, we're gonna love him. You know what that sounds like? It sounds like Minnesota football when it comes to Wisconsin, a bunch of turncoats. And now it seems that Rice and, and Jimmy the ref are arguing about something. What is that that, that Cody has in his hand? It's baby oil. Oh, will you give me a break? As he glistens, the, it is Nobody like, here wants to see Cody Rice slathering himself in baby oil. It is like he was chiseled from the great Michelangelo himself. Cody Rice, a physical right specimen now. to behold. And the Black Stallion keeping his eyes firmly on the camera. He doesn't want to look anywhere else right now. There you see Rassel and Rick keeping his distance. These fans at ringside want nothing to do with Cody Rice. One fan wanted to, though, but I guess Cody realizes it's championship time. Oh, come on. Will we just get to the darn match already? And I, I, I wonder if there's not an advantage there with Cody Rice. Perhaps he's slathering on so much baby oil that the Black Stallion won't be able to keep his grip on the man. I don't see your hypothesis making any sense. All I know is that both of these men are gonna put the pedal to the metal 
because it's got to hit the floor in this main event matchup. Big implications. Indeed, we are getting the lead out here at Primetime Wrestling at the Bloomington Knights. This is going to be incredible action if we could ever get it underway. Again, I cannot believe what transpired in the first matchup time. Arya Davari getting his shoulders pinned to the mat. I'm still at a loss for words in regards to that. Just like the night that championship was stolen from him, it hurts. And that wound is still very, very sore, and to have it reopened and exposed truly hurts like salt. And the fact that these people love it is, is only adding more to it. Nonetheless, Rennie D will be moving on in this championship tournament. And now Cody Rice back to the outside. And Cody Rice seems to be becoming a little agitated with the fans here at ringside. One of these two men is likely to face Rennie D in the next round of this championship tournament for the PTW World Heavyweight Championship. One of the most coveted prizes in the entire industry. Many greats have held the PTW title, coming. and Cody Rice wants to be the next. You can be sure about that. But the man standing in his way is right in the middle of that ring, and his name is the Black Stallion. Some of those men are great, like Ari Navari, and some of those men, some of those men, Mark, are former greats, like Lenny Lee, former great. Over, over the hill, past his prime. Back it up, old man. Ridiculous the way he is running this place. You have a lot of pent up rage towards towards one Lenny Lane, it would seem. You and won't answer my phone calls, Mark. Well, Lenny Lane has had a has turned over a new leaf, as it were. A man I called my best friend, my best friend. Two men, of course, not best friends are these two competitors in the ring. The, Absolutely not. The Black Stallion, Cody Rice. We are still waiting for our first semblance of contact in this matchup. And there it is, start things off with a Fez press, nicely done by the Stallion. Of course, I assume the Stallion would be the one to initiate contact here as Cody Rice goes back to the outside. Big surprise there. The surprise is, is that no one's had the respect for Cody Rice, a man who's had the courage to step in that ring to give him the, the space, a little bit of time to get to get the momentum going for himself. He's, he's been jumped from behind practically this entire matchup. Give this man some space. Respect him and respect his craft, but nobody here seems to. The Black Stallion is, he is, he is eagerly awaiting, yet calmly awaiting the entrance of Cody Rice, but he might, his, his niceness might be coming to an end here as he's taking matters into his own hands. And by matters, I mean Cody Rice, and he brings him into the ring the hard way. Arm drag takeover. A pickup and a scoop slam. He got, I mean, it, it's pretty easy to pick up Cody Rice when you think about it, so it's not that much of a feat. It's, he's not a true heavyweight. He is competing underweight for this heavyweight class. I weighing in at a slim and trim, 198 pounds this morning. If you were to ask the Black Stallion if he just hoisted up 198 pounds, I'm sure that he would tell you otherwise, Donnie Colfax. The Black Stallion is known to say a lot of things different when he's in front of the people and when he's behind the people or behind the curtain. Would you, abs would you look at that look of absolute sheer terror on that youngster? A master politician is the Black Stallion. Oh, he's gonna hit that kid. Someone get in there. Someone needs to teach that youngster some respect. I don't think Cody Rice is the one that needs to be giving out parenting advice. He rolls in and back out, breaking the count, and he goes right back to those fans. It seems like he's almost afraid of the Black Stallion. It looks like these, just, these people just wish they were the superstar that is Cody Rice instead. They just want to be a bunch of bullies and throw their slop all over this superstar, their hatred, their vitriol. Cody Rice absolutely infuriated at this point. He might do best to channel that rage towards his competitor. And these fans happy to just laugh at Cody Rice, which only infuriates him that much more. How would you feel being disrespected by these people? A bunch of mouth breathers they are. Still disrespect is disrespect, even if it's from the lowest totem on the pole. Rice with a cheap shot is how he was able to enter that ring again untouched. And now that the stallion is down, sure, now Cody Rice is going to mount an offense now that the man is down on the canvas. 
A bunch of boots. Just look at that with the intensity. Cody Rice is laying those in. He is stopping a mud hole in the Black Stallion. And now all he has to do is walk it dry. One, two, three. Knee to the midsection. And the Black Stallion crumples down in a heap. Don't let that 198 pounds worth of knee fool you. It was expertly applied, if that's what you mean, Mark, with precision, and now the boot right to the breadbasket. The Black Stallion trying to come back. Silence, a, silence. An elbow to the back of the neck is gonna stop that in short fashion. I was trying to silence you, Mark, so I can tell the people if they wanna be a part of this action, to visit pgwrestling.com and get their tickets. But sure, Mark, go up on your journalistic job and describe what's happening in this matchup in an unbiased, fair manner. Go, Mark, do it. Cody Rice with a forearm shot to the back. That is what he does. He keeps his opponent down to the mat. Thank you very much for that, by the way, Donnie. I appreciate that. Someone's got to do the job of it. Someone does. And the 198 pounds comes crashing down on the Stallion's back. And he is looking weary at this point. Looks, Cody, Cody Rice, the onslaught continues. Looks like he's about to just cut this off. Come on, Cody. He hoists him up, a sidewalk slam, puts him back down. He's gonna go for the pin attempt. Two. A, a bit of an arrogant cover there. Not, not fully great finding the leg. I really felt though, even though he's a slim and trim 198, that Cody Rice, the way he, he just leveled the Black Stallion with that sidewalk slam was two and three count. The Black Stallion hangs onto the rope following the Irish whip. An elbow to the kisser of Cody Rice. He looked cross-eyed for a moment there. He did, and the foot is not going to straighten him back out. That's for sure. It's just going to make it worse. The Black Stallion now is going to charge on in. But and Rice, a spear. Rice countered it with a spear. Out of nowhere. I did ne I've did. i never seen anything like that before from Cody Rice. One, two, and three. I got to hand it to Rice. Quite athleticism by Rice there, able to deliver that spear. And I'll admit it just is incredible because I am an unbiased viewer of this product. I'm an unbiased person at my heart. The Black Stallion incredibly kicked out of that spear and is still, he still got fighting. Let's make sure, Jimmy the ref, let's make sure that it's not easy enough for Rice to slide that forearm right under the trachea, cutting off the the uh, oh. air supply there, that is not legal if that is in fact what was happening, which was look from my vantage point. A lot of things look different from our vantage points, Mark. Uh, Too Rice. bad yours are wrong. Yeah, did you see that one? Rice held onto the tights as the Black Stallion is trying to get away. And puts an elbow in his kidney for good measure. Follows it up with a kick to the midsection right in the side. It's gonna take the wind out of you. Rice has the Stallion in the corner. Corner to corner. Reversal by Black Stallion, though. The Stallion knows where he is. He is a seasoned veteran. Don't let this get you, Cody. Stay on top of him. Rice confused, it looks like, at least right now. A couple shots to the head there. The Black Stallion is up to the top rope. And a diving shoulder tackle takes down Rice. Every last pound of him. One, two. Two, two count only, says Jimmy the Ref. A miracle has occurred in this ring as the Husky Heartthrob somehow kicked out of that maneuver. Several miracles have occurred tonight, and this is just one in a series of many, quite frankly. This action is nothing but exciting. This atmosphere is nothing but electric. This is prime time wrestling. And that is the poor Husky Heartthrob, Cody Rice, laying on his back at a slim and trim 198 pounds. And he was just hit by the freight train, the bull. Black Stallion right in the chest. And still, look who's up first. Cody Rice is up first, and he is delivering forearms to the back. His clubbing forearm shots just keeps the win out of the Black Stallion. He keeps going right back to that same spot. He has taken the energy out of the Stallion. But the Stallion now, coming back. He's coming back, everybody. The Stallion reverses. Elbow, down goes Rice. Flying clothesline, down goes Rice. But he gets back up, he's getting back up, they're still fighting. And that was some sort of a power slam it looked like. Two. Not enough of it to connect though. He picked him up and he just threw him right down. It was like a cross between a, a, a hip toss and, a, and, and a, I don't know what else. A sidewalk slam, it was, it was definitely done with, with 
forethought, and it was definitely done to take out the Husky Heartthrob, but it's it's not working. The Black Stallion now trying to build on the crowd's momentum. Time. He goes for that yes. bicycle kick. Good he, job, Cody. He did not connect that time. Oh, and it, a There's devastating the follow up. Splash. There's that follow up. Come on, Cody. The weight of One, rice. Two, three. Did that do it? That did it. The weight of rice. The splash in the corner is what sealed the deal on this matchup. A little justice this evening here I, at the Bloomington Knights. I got to tell you, I did not expect yeah. that. Cody Rice sneaks away with this matchup following the splash in the corner. I didn't Try see the Black it. Stallion shoulders left off that match. After that, at any point in that attempt, no, it was one, then it was two, and then yes, folks, you saw yourselves. It was three. Jimmy the rest. It's the bat. It's over. Cody Rice advances. It looks like the Black Stallion is conferring with, with Jimmy the ref. He believes that there's some, some treachery. He thought that maybe his leg was on the rope. Jimmy, Jimmy doesn't need to listen to any of these people. They, they, what matters is that the bell is wrong. The Black Stallion now exiting the ring. No instant replay here in primetime wrestling. Indeed not. This one looks like it's in the books. Cody Rice, your winner of this second matchup, he will be advancing and ready to along with him. Are together, it looks like in the semifinal. Indeed they are. We got two more matchups next time for you. But wait a second now. There's the familiar toll bell. We heard this last time and with the destruction that followed was this is a sound that's Mark, known worldwide. Mark, you, I didn't see him in the back. He wasn't scheduled to be here tonight. I didn't hear anything, Mark. I'm telling you I'm the truth. Are you telling me? Have you? No, someone. Someone to say, oh my God. It's, I just think I see. It's, it is him. It's him. It is the executioner. I could have sworn it just got about 10 degrees colder in here. And now I know why. The executioner. He was not supposed to be here. The cold stare of death is just laying upon all these people as the executioner. Oh no. No one in this building knows why this man Get is here. Get out of there, Jimmy. You don't want his wrath. The executioner. Jimmy, run. I think he might just want to talk to me. No, oh my. No. no, that is not what he wants to do. He hoists him up. Uh, Jimmy the ref. No. He was folded like an accordion. Did someone get down here. Jimmy the ref. Uno, someone please stop this insanity. He is not supposed to be here tonight. Udo, the executioner. Doing what he can, but the executioner, he just picks him up like he's nothing and throws him down to the canvas. Who is going to stop this man? Lenny Lane's going to have to stop this, this monster. This isn't a man. I repeat, he's a monster. He is not supposed to be here. It's commissioner the executioner. Lane. Has a, he's got a handful. He's got more than that. He's got to stop the executioner from, from running rough shot. This is wrong. Folks, stay with us. We will try. We'll try to figure this mess out. Thanks for being with us, Primetime Wrestling. We'll see you next time.